Hello students, this video deals with the solubility of salts and the preparation of soluble salts. The solubility is the ability of the substance that is solute to mix into a liquid that is the solvent. So let's get started. All nitrates, ammonium, sodium and potassium salts are soluble in water. So the nitrates, ammonium, sodium and potassium salts, they are mixed in water. Most chlorides and sulfates, they are soluble, but majority of carbonates, they are insoluble. Because carbonates, they have strong bonds and it causes too much energy to break the bonds. So mostly, carbonates are insoluble, whereas chlorides and sulfates, they are soluble. Most chlorides are soluble except silver chloride, mercury chloride and lead chloride. So keep it in mind that these three molecules are insoluble. Similarly, most sulfates are soluble except calcium sulfate, barium sulfate and lead sulfate. So these three are insoluble. Now, most carbonates, they are insoluble in water except sodium carbonate, potassium carbonate and ammonium carbonate. So carbonates, they are majorly insoluble except sodium, potassium and ammonium carbonates. Now let's see the use of copper sulfate and barium sulfate. The copper sulfate salt solution is used to test hemoglobin in blood before transfusion. Hemoglobin, it's the red pigment in red blood cells. So copper sulfate solution is used to test hemoglobin in blood before transfusion. Similarly, the barium sulfate salt, it is used in porridge and it's given to the people requiring X-ray. Now let's see the preparation of soluble salts. These salts are prepared by the reaction of metal with acid, metal oxide with acid, metal hydroxide with acid and metal carbonate with acid. Now let's see the reaction of metal with acid. You can see that zinc is reacting with sulfuric acid and forming zinc sulfate and hydrogen gas is produced. In general, the metal is added to the acid until there is no further reaction. This is when no more bubbles of hydrogen gas are produced. Now the excess metal, it is filtered out and the clear filtrate is then evaporated until crystals begin to form in the hot solution. This reaction is suitable for more reactive metals like magnesium, zinc, iron and aluminium but it is not suitable for reaction with sodium, potassium and calcium because these are very reactive atoms and they can cause explosion. Now let's see the reaction of metal oxide with acid. You can see that copper oxide is reacting with sulfuric acid and forming copper sulfate and water copper it is displacing sulfate from the sulfuric acid and water is being formed so copper sulfate and water are being formed by the reaction of copper oxide and sulfuric acid it is suitable for those metals which don't react with dilute acid for example copper but copper oxide if it is warmed with dilute acid it forms salt students we must add excess copper oxide to the warm sulfuric acid so that all the acid is neutralized. The unreacted oxide, it is then removed by filtering. The filtrate is a blue solution of copper sulfate and the crystals are obtained by concentrating the solution by evaporation and then leaving it to cool. And then the crystals formed are removed by filtration. As copper sulfate crystals contain water of crystallization, so it is important not to evaporate the solution to dryness. So basically, we use concentrated acid, we use excess amount of metal, and we heat the solution. Now here you can see the unreacted oxide is filtered and the crystals are obtained by concentrating solution by evaporation. Now let's see the reaction of metal hydroxide with acid. As you can see, potassium hydroxide is reacting with hydrochloric acid and is forming potassium chloride and water. This method is especially suitable for soluble metal hydroxides, which are called alkalis. 
and the process is known as titration. It's a very important process in chemistry. This involves the adding an acid from a burette into a conical flask. The conical flask contains the alkali colored by 2-3 drops of a suitable indicator. This is the conical flask and this is the burette. This contains the alkali and this contains the acid. Now, the alkali is accurately measured out using a pipette and its filler. Students, this is a pipette and this is used to measure alkali accurately. Now what happens is that the end of the titration is called the end point and is reached when the color of the indicator in the alkali changes. So at this point, neutralization has occurred and a salt and water are formed. Finally, the crystals of salts are obtained by evaporation. In this case, as potassium chloride has no water of crystallization, so it can be evaporated to dryness. So this was about titration and the reaction of metal hydroxide and acid. Now let's see the reaction of metal carbonate with acid. As you can see, zinc carbonate and nitric acid are reacting. Students keep it in mind, whenever there is a reaction of carbonate, carbon dioxide gas is evolved. Students, the carbonate fizzes and gives off carbon dioxide gas. So, the solution, it is then filtered and evaporated to concentrate the solution for crystallization and in this case, zinc nitrate is obtained. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Wish you all the best.